and greetings friends. Today I want to talk to you about Revelation the 14th chapter verse 9 through 12, but more specifically verse 11 that says this, And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. A lot of people take this to mean that this is proof that there's everlasting torments in a place called hell. Is that true? Well, let's break it down and see what it really says. Now, notice it says it's the smoke of their torment. It's not them being tormented forever and ever. It says the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And what is smoke? Well, smoke is pretty much what remains of burnt bodies that are destroyed by fire. And this is what this scripture is really telling us. This scripture, when you examine the scripture, the whole scripture, it actually reveals the utter destruction of the wicked as opposed to eternal torments, as we shall see. Now, if you notice verse 9, it says, The third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive the mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same. So these are people. What is the location? The location is on this earth. People are worshiping the beast, and they have his mark, and so on. This is taking place on the earth. This is not taking place in hell. The same shall drink the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. The wrath of God takes place where? On this earth. Revelation, the 19th chapter, so shows Jesus Christ coming back, and he's... And he's uh, pouring out the wrath of God on the inhabitants of this earth. So the, this location is not in hell. This is taking place on the earth. Was just poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And, and he, these are the people that worship the beast, shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. This takes place in the lake of fire, which is on this earth. Jesus spoke of Gehenna fire. Gehenna is the valley of Hinnom that's on this earth. This is not taking place up in hell. And the smoke of their torment. So these people are burnt up and become ash. If we go to Malachi, the fourth chapter, verse 1, it says, Behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, as we just read here in Revelation, the 14th chapter. And all the proud, yea, all that do wickedly, these are the people that worship the beast and have his mark, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble, they are burnt up, and the day that cometh shall burn them up. And then what happens when they're burnt up? The smoke of their torment arises forever. They are tormented, but they're not tormented forever, they're tormented till they are destroyed. And then the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever, saith the eternal of hosts, that it shall be, shall leave them neither root nor branch. And then it says, verse 3, of the, it says here of the righteous, and ye, that's the righteous, shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of the feet, of your feet, in the day that I shall do this, saith the eternal of hosts. So this is actually telling us here the same thing in Revelation, the 14th chapter, that these people shall be burnt up, and the smoke of their torment ariseth uh, ascendeth up forever and ever. In Henry Alford's Greek New Testament, this is just more proof that this is talking about destruction and not uh, continual torment forever and ever. Henry Alford's uh, Greek New Testament says, Revelation, the 14th chapter, verse 11, says that this is a reference from Isaiah. Reference from Isaiah from which this imagery comes. And in Isaiah, it's talking about the fate of Edom that you read of in Isaiah, the 34th chapter, verse 9 through 10. If you notice, it says this, And the streams thereof, verse 9, shall be turned into pitch, and the dust thereof into brimstone, and the land thereof shall become a burning pitch. And it shall not be quenched night or day. That's talking about the fire. And it... It continues this fire till everything is consumed, which I proved to you in other broadcasts. The smoke thereof shall go up forever. Same imagery. From generation to generation, it shall lie waste. So it's, it's desolation, it's waste. There aren't people there continually being tormented. Uh, Edom is not still existing. It says it's going to be waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. 
And notice verse 12. And they shall call the nobles thereof to the kingdom, but none shall be there. So these people are gone. They are destroyed. They are dead. And all their princes shall be nothing. So obviously, it's talking about the complete destruction of the wicked when it talks about the smoke of their torment going up forever and ever. When you look at Malachi, Isaiah the 34th chapter, the language is the same. It is talking about the destruction of the wicked in Gehenna fire. But what about this where it says, and they shall have no rest night nor a day nor night who worship the beast, his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Well, when you look at the language, as Gillibald says here in his book, The Righteous Judge, page 24, and we got to remember, this takes place on the earth. It's not taking place in a place called hell, somewhere underneath our feet, somewhere. It's taking place right here on the earth. Gillibald says there will be no break or intermission in the suffering of the followers of the beast, and that takes place while they're alive, while it continues, while they're alive. But in themselves, they do not say that it will continue forever. It doesn't say their torment's going to continue forever. The smoke of their torment ascends forever, but the the torment doesn't continue forever. It continues while they are alive, while they are suffering. It's like someone who suffers an affliction. He or she suffers the affliction until it's over. And when you look at the context here, they are tormented until they're thrown into the lake of fire and they are burnt up and they become ash. It continues while they're alive and their suffering continues until it is over. And that's what it means by there is no rest day or night. And notice Revelation, the ninth chapter, verse 6, it says, In those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and they shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. Obviously, it's taking place on the earth, and they are going to suffer day and night until it is over. If they do not repent, they're going to suffer until it is over, and it is over in the lake of fire where they are burnt up and become ash, and the smoke of their torment rises forever. Notice Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah was a type of the lake of fire that you read of in Jude, the first chapter, verse 7. And in Genesis, the 19th chapter, verse 28, it says this, And he looked, this is Abraham, toward Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land of the plain, and behold, and lo, the smoke of the country went up as the smoke of a furnace. And it plainly says that God destroyed the cities of the plain, verse 29. So a smoke, the smoke, just means uh, it's talking about total destruction, as Bacciocci says in page 212 of Immorality and, and Resurrection. It is evident that the unquenchable fire and the ever ascending smoke are metaphoric symbols of complete destruction, extermination, and annihilation. And uh, Psalm 3720, King David basically says this about the wicked, but the wicked shall perish. They're not living forever in a place called hell being tormented. It says they shall perish. And the enemies of the Lord, like the splendor of the meadows, shall vanish into smoke. They, that's the wicked, shall vanish away. So this is just a symbol of complete destruction and annihilation of the wicked. They are not continually being tortured forever and ever in a place called hell. It is talking about complete destruction. They are suffering on this earth day and night during the wrath of God. They are suffering while they're alive and it'll lead up to the time where it's complete. Their suffering is going to be over in the lake of fire where they burnt up and they become ash and their ashes will be under the soles of the feet of the righteous. So to say that this scripture proves that when people die, evil people die, they go in a place called hell and they're tortured forever and ever and ever. It's just another Bible misconception.